This is the 911 Talk Podcast, episode 86, for Monday, May 28, 2012. Welcome to this edition of E911 Talk with your host, Mark Fletcher, Pilot Line Manager for Emergency Services at Avaya. Now, here's Fletch. From time to time, the federal government charters and owns corporations, which operate to provide various public services. These corporations, unlike agencies such as the Environmental Protection Agency or the federally independent commissions like the Federal Communications Commission, have a separate legal personality from the federal government. Although sometimes these entities receive federal budgetary appropriations, they also can have an independent source of revenue from their operation. One example of this is the National Railroad Passenger Corporation, commonly known as Amtrak. They provide the railroad infrastructure across the U.S. Another is the Gallaudet University, which is a federally chartered university for the education of the deaf and the hard of hearing located in Washington, D.C. Earlier this year on February 22nd, the Middle Class Tax Relief and Job Creation Act of 2012 was enacted into law. As we've discussed before, attached to this legislation were specific provisions known as the Next Generation 911 Advancement Act of 2012. Within this rider legislation, the First Responder Network Authority, FRNA, also referred to as FirstNet, was created within the National Technology Information Administration, or NTIA. And that was done to ensure the establishment of a nationwide interoperable public safety broadband network. It was also done to give Harry Newton an extra chapter or two in Newton's Telecom Dictionary by adding in a bunch of extra acronyms. Had to give you a plug where I could, Harry. FirstNet will be headed by a board consisting of the Secretary of Department of Homeland Security, the Attorney General of the United States, the Director of Office of Management and Budget, and 12 individuals appointed by the Secretary of Commerce. The Secretary of Commerce has to appoint at least three individuals to represent the collective interests of states, localities, tribes, and territories. They have to seek to ensure geographic and regional representation of the United States, seek to ensure rural and urban representation, and appoint at least three individuals who have served as public safety professionals. Other qualifications criteria include individuals with technical, network, or financial expertise. Wow. Just when you thought you were starting to understand this stuff technically, the political side raises its head. Actually, it appears that considerable oversight was included in the, quote, management of FirstNet, and hopefully that'll ensure its success from a technical as well as a regulatory perspective. Now, you may remember several stories in the news that were talking about the D-Block. This refers to a slice of radio frequency spectrum that used to be occupied by the UHF television band somewhere around channel 62 and channel 67. Now the idea behind the D block being prime real estate for the national communication network for first responders is the fact that it resides very closely to other areas in the spectrum that are used for 4G LTE broadband. Because of that, it's well suited to carry broadband data communications at the speeds needed for multimedia data. Additionally, since the frequency range was used for television and is now vacated, it's an open slice of highway in the air that is available nationwide. Now, there was always considerable speculation on who would manage, who would own the licensing rights for this new piece of prime beachfront real estate, as well as how the $7 billion of network construction trust fund would be managed. Oh, by the way, currently there's an existing initiative for mission critical voice systems called Project 25 or P25. And since the new FirstNet network is initially being designed for public safety's data needs, it will not be replacing P25 networks. Now, in spite of this, I'm sure that Ethernet and TCP IP, who were also designed to meet data needs, did not intend to replace voice when they were first introduced. However, as technology advances, intelligent networks and architectures such as shortest path bridging are developed and rolled out. I wouldn't be surprised to see non-mission critical public safety voice applications gradually expanding through the next generation 911 networks being deployed today. Somewhere beyond that could be mission critical voice. If you think back 15 years ago, we barely had dial-up connectivity to the internet. Today, we're delivering broadband at speeds that rival the speed of many hardwired facilities and doing that over a wireless environment. Technology is moving so fast that it becomes almost impossible to predict beyond five years into the future, even if you're a smart guy. So where will FirstNet be deployed? 
will it be mandated nationally? Well, as it turns out, each state governor has the option of deciding whether to include themselves in the national rollout of FirstNet or issue their own RFP and deploy their own broadband radio access network, or RAN. Now, although they have the freedom of choice to opt in or opt out, that decision has to be made within three months of the first NRFP completion at the national level. And if a particular state does decide to opt out of the FirstNet RAN, they only have six months to develop and complete their own RFP process for a radio access network. And that radio access network is subject to FCC approval. If a particular state wants to build their own RAN, they'll be required to interconnect and interoperate with the federal core. And from a funding perspective, it is expected that FirstNet will operate in a for-profit mode and charge its customers access fees. So what will FirstNet look like? Well, very much like any other large enterprise network, actually. There will be nationwide and regional data centers that make up the core network. This core network will provide connectivity to the radio access networks, or RANs, that are made up of 4G LTE broadband networks in the various states. There'll be a backhaul network connecting the RAN networks to the core and PSAP connectivity via broadband local services. Sound like a familiar picture? Well, it should, because this is the same concept that the internet is built on. But I want to make one thing perfectly clear. Even though FirstNet looks like the internet, acts like the internet, and may even use pieces of the internet, it's designed to be a separate managed entity operating independently of the internet. And FirstNet has to maintain the highest levels of resiliency, security, and operational flexibility, and under the direction of the director of NIST and the FCC, has to ensure the development and promulgation of certified devices, components, protocols, and standards. In many ways, public safety has just discovered the Internet. Fortunately, we have a large book of lessons learned at our disposal. By referencing that list, hopefully we can avoid making some of our previous mistakes twice. I want to give special thanks to Motorola Solutions Incorporated and their white paper, D-Block Spectrum Act and the FirstNet Broadband Network, RC-99-2205. That was an excellent white paper that was the basis for this podcast. You can stop by and read my blog at www.avaya.com forward slash Fletcher, where the URL will be included. Thanks again for listening. We'll see you next time. You've been listening to the E911 Talk Podcast with your host, Mark Fletcher, Product Line Manager for Emergency Services at Avaya. E911 Talk is a weekly podcast available on sites like this, as well as iTunes, and is available free of charge. If you have any comments or questions, you can email Fletch at FletcherM at Avaya.com. That's Fletcher, the letter M, at Avaya.com. Be sure to listen in next week for more informative topics on E911. 911, the line is recorded. What is the exact location of your emergency?